Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at the Azure Active Directory Identity Protection. Now we are doing a series of videos uh, to help you prepare for the AC 500 exam. And uh, Azure AD Identity Protection is one of the topics that's covered in the exam. So the first thing that you need to know, uh, this is a service that is uh, not available in every 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 license that you have so uh, if you have just a basic Azure Active Directory which is free this feature is not available it's not even available in Azure AD Premium P1 so to use this feature identity protection you gotta use the Azure AD Premium P2 okay so that's first thing that's uh, kind of exam question so I want to just stress on that uh, the very beginning so now if we look at it uh, the difference what are the features that is adding so it's telling you that it's gonna add you uh, let you add risk policies for users okay and then risk policies for also sign in risk okay uh, for the first one you can uh, do the policies via identity protection and the, for the other one for the sign in you can use identity protection or conditional access okay it also lets you to generate security reports that you can uh, review periodically which is also not available in p1 or in the basic version uh, security reports are available for risky users uh, you have full access for these two you have limited information available on on this uh, other two uh, uh, level of license if you're using those notifications you have access other two you don't weekly digest you have MFA registration policies and the important thing uh, uh, that comes with this identity protection so you can actually go within uh, uh, within this service and enable MFA enterprise-wide anywhere you have a cloud-based uh, ID available it will enforce the MFA uh, on all of these users so let's go to the top and kind of read a little bit from the Microsoft documentation so what does it do really so it automates the detection and remediation of identity based risks so do we see any risky behavior from a user standpoint or maybe he's sign in uh, maybe he's trying to attempt too many a uh, password maybe he's using a, a, a device an endpoint that has malware installed on it uh, maybe you know we found somehow well, Microsoft determined that this user account uh, they have some leaked password that's available in dark in the dark web so investigate risk using data in the portal and export risk disease detection data to third party utilities for further analysis so it can do all of that it's your automated way of analyzing your users and their identities and and to detect if there is any anything suspicious going on so remember again uh, we stress a lot on identity being uh, being the new control plane and you have to always uh, think that uh, it is, it's a zero trust model every time you allow user to do something you validate so this is a very very important feature uh, to increase the the security of your organization now what what is it does uh, it uses learnings from Microsoft uh, has acquired from their position in organization with Azure AD the consumer space with Microsoft accounts in gaming with Xbox to protect users. So it has a lots of signal, 6.5 trillion signal that it, it, it looks at uh, and analyze and learns what is a uh, suspicious behavior. Okay. So the signals generated by and fed to identity protection can be further fed into tools like conditional access, which we'll take a look at to make access decisions. Okay. And you can also send that to a SIEM tool for further uh, investigation. Now, why this automated way of identifying suspicious login is important? Uh, breach relay, 
4.6 billion attacks detected in May of 2018. Can you believe that? Password spray 350k just in April 2018. And phishing is just un it's very difficult to quantify. Uh, but Microsoft observed 23 million risk events in March of 2018. Now, identity protection identified risk. And there are several different categories where uh, you can uh, put the risk. A typical level, sign in from a typical location based on the user's recent login. Say you log in from the US today and next day you log in from uh, India maybe. Okay. So maybe you usually you work in the US, but now they detect a login from some other country. Anonymous IP address. Sign in from anonymous IP address, uh, like a Tor browser you're using to anonymate yourself, uh, what is the reason, right? That could be a suspicious behavior. Unfamiliar sign-in properties. Sign-in properties which have not seen recently. Uh, malware link to IP address. Sign-in from malware link IP address. So this is, uh, maybe there's a command and control server someone, Microsoft is aware of it, and someone is trying to log in from that IP, so that's going to be detected. Leak credential. This risk detection indicates the user's valid credential have been leaked. Uh, uh, threat intelligence and also Microsoft internal and external threat intelligence sources. They can identify based on the behavior. Okay. Now risk investigation. Administrators can review the detection and take manual action on them if needed. There are three key reports that administrator use to investigate identity protection. Risky users. So you can figure out. All right, who are the risky users? Then the next thing is the risky sign-ons. Okay, what are the sign-ons that could, you know, that, that, that are questionable and the risk detection, okay? Uh, you can read at some more stuff, but I'm not gonna go over those. Uh, the other thing, uh, permissions. So who are the people who can really uh, investigate this uh, risk that is associated with the identity protection? So you, if you're a global administrator, of course, you have full access to identity protection. If you are a security administrator, you also have access to identity protection, but you won't be able to reset the password for a user. Look, here can do and can do. You cannot reset password for a user. You can be a security operator. If you're an operator, you can view the identity protection and reports and overview blend. You can dismiss the user risk, confirm state safe sign-in, or confirm compromise. But you cannot configure or change policies. You cannot reset the user password, or you cannot even uh, configure any alerts. If you're a reader, uh, you can only view the reports, but you pretty much can't do anything. Okay, for as an administrator, you can uh, ap apply policies. So if somebody asks you the, the question, who can configure the policies within identity protection uh, service, it would be your global administrators or the security administrators. Okay. Uh, we already looked at the licensing, so let's go and do some demo. So what we'll do, uh, it's the identity protection so azure ad identity protection so we'll click on that one and uh, so first thing that you see is it's uh, bringing you this this page and it comes to the overview play just like any other uh, services within the azure so first of all it's showing me uh, identity security score if you click on it it says identity secure score measures and compares your security posture to industry pattern monitor your score and take off take take action so it's uh, only 20 and it looks like i could improve my score up to uh, 203 uh, in a, in my environment okay so it's um, showing uh, uh, user trends for the last 30 days and uh, really it's a brand new account if there is not too much uh, that we need to do uh, that we haven't done too much work for even Microsoft to detect anything so the so the thing that you, that we need to do for things to show up over here is to uh, create some policies uh, let's look at the reports uh, we know we, we don't have but you have three different kind of reports as we already said before 
risky users that will list any risky users that you may have risky sign-ins and a risk detection uh, so three is so risky user risk sign-in and risk itself okay so you can assign the policies so let's assign some policies over here so user risk policy say we want to apply this policy to all users so what is the condition so for risk level and you can uh, click on that to get some more information about uh, risk levels so what i want to say if uh, it's a high very high risk level or say medium and above okay if uh, microsoft finds a user he is at a medium risk or high risk then what do you want to do so this is the condition if it's met then this is the control we want to apply so select a control so what we want to do you can either block all access or you can allow access but you can say okay now you are at heightened risk require a password change so we can select that one and enforce policy we'll say on so this policy from now on is going to be enforced and also i'm going to say okay all right so this policy has been successfully saved similarly you can do the sign in policy and again it's we can apply to all users conditions uh, again select uh, say medium and above okay and we can do the same the same thing in here access control what is my access control you require multi-factor authentication so for sign in it's not uh, it's not a password change for sign in it goes with the multi-factor authentication okay for users it went with a password change for sign in risk policy you, you got the multi-factor authentication uh, so enforce policy yes why not save and email for registration policy so here let's in this case instead of whole bunch of users just say uh, let's select some of the users in here <clears throat> and what we'll do uh, we'll just say for these users I wanna uh, I want to make sure that multi-factor authentication is enabled so anytime these users are uh, will try to log in to our system enforce policy yes uh, but just remember this uh, MFA registration policy only affects cloud-based Azure MFA if you have MFA server it will not be affected okay so uh, okay access control I haven't saved uh, require MS so select okay so now I can save this policy okay so so you have now seen three different ways to assign policies and we have defined uh, uh, user risk policies there is one risk policy in here that we are enforcing uh, sign in risk policy we have enforced MFA registration policy we have been enforced okay uh, so that's uh, pretty much how you use the Azure identity protection uh, let's see if there's anything else that's interesting uh, notification you can uh, create email uh, emails that are sent to the following users alerts on user level at or so if maybe medium and high. it depends on you how if you wanna get an email for medium or maybe high and you can let's say send an email to me okay so send to the following users okay so if anything like that happens i'll be notified you can set a weekly digest and the weekly digest email sent yes uh, and this i'm the global administrator uh, the email will be sent to me and i think that's about it i can go back to home and uh, say okay well thank you for watching this video that's all about uh, identity protection uh, and uh, good luck with the exam